What is going on, TAC members? Hopefully everybody's doing well. It's the Scrooge. So, what to talk about? You know, it's funny. My 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 biggest video on here is me talking about how I don't like people and why I don't like people. And I feel like that video was successful because um, it's probably my most one of my most natural videos, if not the most natural videos, because I was really in a vulnerable spot. And when I made that video, I didn't have an audience. I didn't even think anyone would ever find that video on YouTube. I was literally venting to the camera and just uploaded it on a YouTube channel with no subscribers. And that's what's brought in most of my subscribers to this day. Um, and, you know, I tried to shake that feeling because, you know, you have people, you hear people talking about protect your energy. Um, life is all about energy. If you put good energy out, um, then good energy will come back to you. Um, you put negative energy out, the negative energy will come back to you. And I do believe that still to this day. So, you know, the more I try, I heard that the more I tried to get away from those negative thoughts of me not liking people um, and me being a misanthrope and me just being a Scrooge. Um, I tried to step away from that, that way of thinking. To no avail. It's hard. People really are selfish people are selfish y'all and the thing is i pay attention to details i think that's the reason why i'm so hard uh i'm not gonna say i'm hard to get along with because when i'm being nice i can get along with everybody it's when i challenge them on something that i don't agree with if, if, if it's something that someone's doing that i don't agree with i'll challenge them on it on it and they either respond in a way that pisses me off or they just really don't give me enough to go off of which also pisses me off um you know, because most people just can't look at look in the mirror. They will not look at their their worst selves. And I truly believe that most people are selfish. That's why I believe in relationships, friendships. Um, I'm the type of person I really believe I can be friends with somebody without having to benefit off of them at all. I don't need to benefit off of my friends at all. My only benefit would be their friendship, their companionship, their company. I don't need to, if I'm... Um, if I'm down and out, I'm not the type of person that tries to hang out around somebody. If I'm down and out and stressed out and going through it, I want to be alone. I don't want to bring that energy around somebody. But a lot of times, you know, it's funny. I had a friend of mine. We've been off and on for years. Um, we were friends for the longest. And then she moved out of the apartments. This is when I was 18. She moved out of the apartments I was living in. Just giving an example. Uh, she moved out of the apartments that we were living in. They were low-income apartments. And, you know, we were close friends, everyday friends. And she never, um, once she moved out of those those apartments, she never came back and checked in on us or anything. So me and a couple people were like, oh, yeah, she don't care about us. Um, she would even come back to the apartments and visit and wouldn't even step, uh, knock on our door or anything. I'm like, damn, that's kind of crazy. That was a good friend of mine. So I was like, all right, screw it. Well, time went on and... She ended up coming back around again uh, for whatever reason. I'm pretty sure it's because she was probably, she's like one of those out of sight, out of mind type people. When she's having fun, she doesn't really care about you. But when she's going through something, that's when she wants to be around. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, so we've been going through this like off and on. And I remember we ended up falling out or I kind of cut her off one time because um, she hooked up with one of my friends and and I just knew that it was going to be downhill. And I didn't like how her intentions were, were bad intentions. She was trying to use him for his money. And this was a good dude. And to this day, she'll probably, she'll still go around and tell people that he was the messed up guy in her relationship. But me and everybody else that knows, knows that it was her. But, um, um, because even when we weren't cool, there was flies on the wall uh, telling me reporting. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, like, so we had stopped being friends for a while. And she came back around when she was sick. She has a thyroid problem. So she was super skinny, stressed out. She had three kids, three more kids than when I last seen her. The kids were stressing her out. She had three, you know. Um, and that's the reason why she came back around. After all these years we hadn't talked, she came back around because she knew I was a nice guy. And she needed somebody to talk to. She was burdened. But the whole time when she was living her best life, she didn't come around. Me being the nice guy, I allowed her to come into my space. And she just did what I knew she would do. She proved over again that she was an out of sight, um, out of mind type person. She used me when she was uh, low 
at her worst, and then when she's at her best, she disappears. I'm not that type of person. Um, if I'm going through something, I don't really want to bring my problems around people. Uh, I don't, I don't, and I also don't want to be around if I'm really going through it. I don't want to be fake smiling around people and while they're having the time of their life, I'm really sitting here going crazy in my mind. I don't like that feeling. So when I'm really going through it, I like to be alone. I like to be in the house alone. I don't like people around me when I'm going through it because I might vent too much around them. I don't like to vent to people because, first off, nobody cares when I vent. For some reason, when I vent, nobody cares. They never have. No one cares about what I'm going through. I, I don't know if it's because, I don't know, they don't they, they think it's nothing maybe. I don't know. But mentally, it drives me crazy, the things I go through. Um, I can't shake this this feeling of not liking people. Um, the jobs that I work at, it's getting worse the older I get. The jobs I work at, um, the personalities I have to deal with at these jobs, the girls that I date. You know, I don't think I've ever dated a girl that truly dated me for me. I feel like uh, every girl I ever dated dated me because of something that they could benefit off of, which was a place for them to come stay. Usually that's what it is, a place for them to stay. Um, or I'm paying bills or something. That's what it is. And I feel this with friends, family, co-workers, everything. Like, I just feel this way. I had a co-worker who used to leave me all the time at work. And he swore up and down like, bro, you my guy. You my, you know, you my, he, I hate when people do that. When it, that's a red flag. If anybody ever comes at you and be like, and says, hey, you like family and me, you my guy. Yo, that's a red flag. Anytime anyone's ever said that to me, they were snakes. They were not about to write. Um, and like I said, it's little things, little nuances, little details. Like, so the dude who told me that at work, he was like, man, you my guy. I, you know, I, I really fuck with you. Um. You my nigga, if you don't get no bigger, you should say. I think that's what he used to say. And then, um, but he would leave work, sneak out of work early and leave all the work on me. And when a coworker confronted him about it, um, he was like, oh yeah, I do him like that all the time. It's little stuff like that. You can't tell me that, oh, you my guy, I really fuck with you. And then do shit like that intentionally and expect for me to really look at you like you my guy. I don't like you now. Um, and that's what it is. People always do something to make me not like them. So that's the reason why I've never had successful relationships with the women I dated. Because none of the women I dated ever really liked me for me. I love music. None of the women I date like music. There's no reason for me to date somebody who doesn't like music. I love music. That's my passion. It's been my passion. The girls that I date, even though, even if they know that that's my passion... Even if it's not their passion, for example, I dated a girl who had a who so called had a passion for doing YouTube. It's the newer generation. I wouldn't call it a passion, but she she swore up and down she was passionate about doing YouTube. Um, I hated YouTube at this time. This is you know this is before I recorded this video. I hated or recorded my first video to this channel. I hated YouTube. I could not stand the idea of YouTube because when I looked at YouTube, all I saw was people watching kids watching other kids play with toys, people doing pranks on people, uh, people doing vlogs and stuff. I just did not like YouTube. I was like, what is this? Or like, then I started seeing the educational side of YouTube and I started liking YouTube more. But um. Back then, I just did not like YouTube because I just thought it was it was stupid. Internet, the internet is stupid, y'all. It really is. Like the stuff that you see, people, it's good because people are making money and they have careers out here, just doing nothing but but videos, pointless videos, and they make money off of them. Playing video games, and you got people that are making six figures a year playing video games online, and that's crazy to me. So I hated the internet for this. So when she said she wanted to do YouTube. I didn't like YouTube, so I told her how much I hated YouTube, but I supported her to doing YouTube. I gave her her own room, I bought the camera she wanted, um, and I supported her every day and encouraged her every day to do videos. This is me hating YouTube. But I do music. The girls I like, or the girls I've dated, they don't hate music, they listen to music. They just don't like faking music. They think making music is boring. They don't like the process. Okay, that's fine. That doesn't mean that when I ask you to come press record, you can't come press record. You know? 
I mean, I just feel like you're a shitty person. If you say you like me, and you know I'm passionate about something, but you refuse to do what I ask you to help me better myself within this field or with, with whatever it is I'm trying to tackle. I don't care if this is me trying to start a business. If I'm trying to start a business, my woman should be right by my side with whatever I want from her. She should be right there for me. If it's not anything unreasonable, my woman should be right there 100% supportive. I've never had a 100% supportive girlfriend. Never had a supportive girlfriend. Never had a supportive friend with my music, with anything that I was trying to do. Um, the most that I got support on is when I was cooking, when I was selling food. Um, that's the most time, that's the most support I've ever gotten. And even then, even then that was shaky. Um, but music is so much of my passion. I will cut somebody off over music. My last girlfriend, she was a good girlfriend. This is the young girl I dated. She really wasn't a horrible girlfriend, but she was not supportive. Like, you know, a lot of girls I have I've dated, they had nasty attitudes. They were whores. She was the only girl I can say had a low body count. She's the only girl I ever slept with that had a low body count, which was a good thing. The only female I've ever slept with in my life that had a body count under 10. That's a that's a jewel. If you If you find a female nowadays that has a body count under 10, I would say to hold on to them. So there had to be a real good reason why I would cut that girl off and break up with her, knowing that she had a, a low body count. Because to me, that's gold. But a low body count is one thing, but that's not enough to, uh, to trump an unsupportive girlfriend. Especially when it's something that I'm passionate about. She could have been a virgin, I would have ended up cutting her off. Um, because I just feel like loyalty, most people don't know what loyalty is. Here's my thing, y'all. No one truly is in your circle, family member, a girlfriend, uh, a friend, a close friend, no matter who it is. If they aren't willing to sacrifice for you, they're not in your circle. So the little things I asked for the girls I dated to sacrifice for me was to come press record for me. The little things I asked from friends to sacrifice for me was listen to my music and share it. When I fall out with these, when I fell out with some of these companies, I didn't have anybody to have my back. If anybody wants to have my back and put a one star, I need as many people to put a, a one star on my last job as possible that owes me money. So if you're interested in putting a one star, um, on their account, just leave the comment, go in the comments and I will put the link to their Google page for you to just leave a one star. You can just put nastiest kitchen ever. That's what I want everybody to put nastiest kitchen ever. Since I can't do get any of my friends to do it. If anybody on YouTube wants to support me with the job that will refuses to pay me my last paycheck, um, just give a one star review. I doubt anyone will want to do that, but even still, uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, but that would be nice to have, um, just, uh, the people to have my back when I'm getting done dirty by a restaurant. I can't even find that. Um, I don't know y'all. It's just that, you know, I don't mind being alone, but if I'm going to be alone, I want to truly be alone. I think that's what's going crazy. It's been a long time since I've truly been alone, having a roommate. Um, I can't escape it because I find strength in being alone. Because I know, I've always known that people are shitty. Like That's why I've always been alone. I love being able to go into an apartment and it just be me. And I can kind of be bitter against the world. But that bitterness kind of gave me strength. To When I went out in public, I just had this attitude where it was like, fuck everybody, I don't need none of y'all. Because I'm on my own. And I can plot things on my own. And I can be in my own space. And I can also be more creative in my own space. Um, and just being alone makes me dive into that creativity even more because, um, you don't have any distractions because relationships and friendships are distractions. So when you as lonely as I've been, um, over the years, um, you don't have distractions living in that, Like I go to work and I have to deal with all these BS coworkers that I couldn't stand, but then I'd be able to come home 
and it just be me and I can just be in my own little world. Well, I don't have that right now at all. And I think that's what's really uh, making me go crazy um, because I have a false. I had a song a long time ago. It was like, have you ever felt alone in a room full of friends? Now I'm in the zone. I'm going to do it again. That's how I feel. I hate feeling alone um, in a room that has other people in it or a household that has other people in it. I hate feeling alone when there's other people around me. That's a horrible feeling. I'd rather feel alone because there's, I'm truly alone because there's nobody around me. That's a better feeling. But I think it's worse feeling lonely when there's people around. It's almost like when I'm on house arrest. They, you know, they, they say, you have some people say the jail's better than house arrest. When I was on house arrest, it's hard to say because with house arrest, everybody around you has freedom and the door is right there. And it's hard for you to, it's hard because in jail, everybody's in the same predicament, but on house arrest, it's almost like a tease, you know? You can walk out the door if you want to, but if you do, you, you, you're you fucked. <laughs> And that's what it feels like as far as um, being alone, but not truly being alone. Because house arrest is like being locked up, but not truly being locked up. Um, so that's what I'm dealing with right now. It's stressful. It's annoying. Um, I really need to get to a spot where I just, I just can just have a bare minimum of how much I deal with people. Even the last person I went to record, I went to go record somebody yesterday. Um, and they didn't have all the money that they were supposed to have. So then why did you call me over here? So I just wasted my time and gas money coming to deal with you. It's just little stuff like that. Like it's just stuff that I wouldn't do, you know, and back to what I was saying, I do not have to benefit off somebody in order to be their in order to be their friends. I don't call friends for help when I was in, um, I never called friends for financial help ever. I never called friends when I needed weed or alcohol. I didn't call friends. I had to deal with that on my own. I did not call a friend. I don't like being a burden. That's the type of person I am. Uh, so I didn't call people for weed and alcohol, even when I was fiending for it. Um, my homegirls, you know, I'm one of the only guys that probably the only guy that any of my girl, my homegirls that I was friends with, that I didn't have sex with. Probably the only guy in a circle that never tried to have sex with them. Because even when I'm horny, I did not call my homegirls to try to get uh, have sex with them. Because I felt like that was, you know, disrespectful. Even though they were hoes. They were all hoes. But I still didn't do that. And they used to be like, oh, I appreciate uh, how you're the only guy friend I've ever had and never tried to have sex. I don't never want another girlfriend, uh, a female friend, a homegirl that I'm not having sex with. If I can't have sex with you when I'm horny and lonely, then you're not my friend. Because I know you're a hoe. You're going to have sex with somebody anyway. So we're not friends if we can't have sex. I'm sorry. That's just me. That's just how I feel, y'all. Um, I guess only if you're a promiscuous girl. And most girls are promiscuous. So, no, I don't. I, if you're a promiscuous girl, promiscuous girl, and you, if you've ever been promiscuous, unless you're just a saint right now, unless you're a saint, we can't be friends. But if I know that you be doing thought shit here and there, then I should be able to get some coochie every once in a while if I'm lonely. If you consider my, your, if you consider us friends, that's just how I feel. But if you are my friend, I would never try to have sex with you. Um, that's just not, I don't like to burden people. And that's what makes me more solid than a lot of people. I feel like, because I don't need something from you in order to appreciate you or to have you around. And that's what makes me a true friend. Um, and that's what makes me a true boyfriend when I'm in a relationship. I don't need anything from you. If you told us we couldn't, if you said, I, I don't want to have sex with you for a while because I'm going through something mentally, I'll just be jacking off. You know, as long as you don't treat me different with attitudes or anything like that, with nasty attitudes, then that's cool. I'll still be by your side if I know that you still love me, I guess. Um, but it's hard to find genuine people out here, y'all. It's very hard to find genuine people. Most people use you. For their own benefits and i have a video about that uh called self-preservation um so i'm still the scrooge i'm still the same guy from that from that video that i made way back then um i do not like people y'all <laughs> i tried to go to the light i'm still in the dark it's the scrooge